Hello everyone, this will be a webinar focused on the new dashboards that we designed to use together with Prodomax WMS using our solution B1 Usability Package. In this introduction, I'll just give you a brief overview about our product portfolio. So we have a very broad portfolio focused on supply chain and also horizontal solutions for SAP Business One. Amongst those, we have the B1 Usability Package that is a solution for automations and improving the usability in SAP Business One. That includes the dashboards interface over which we design the dashboards that we will now present. We have already dashboards for another solution in our portfolio that is best manufacturing that we have delivered some months ago. Now we are also delivering the dashboards for WMS that will be included by default in the B1 usability package, meaning that if you have WMS, you can just install the usability package, get the dashboards right away, and just activate them in your dashboards interface. So we have two dashboards and one Kanban board that come in by default. One of the dashboards is called WMS Workload. The other one is WMS Container Management and we have the open picking task Kanban board. So go through one by one for you to know what are the functionalities and the analysis that you can get out from those dashboards. The workload dashboard is designed to give, especially for the logistics supervisors, an understanding of the current workload they have in the warehouse. And the workload is divided into different views. So we have a view, that's the beginning tab we have in this dashboard, that is purchase orders to be received, including already received purchase orders in the past. So we can have an idea on, for example, what is the current delays that we're having for receiving purchase orders for specific products or specific suppliers or in different warehouses. Then we have a view over the open putaways, another one for the sales orders that should be delivered, also on the pick list and on the move orders, detailing by types of move orders. So I'll go one by one explaining the features that we have in each one of the tabs. In the first of them, that is a purchase orders to be received, we start with a filter so we can see, for example, what we have pending to receive today, bringing also delayed orders from the past days that were not received yet. So we can see here what is the current average delay that we have over all the open orders for the different warehouses, so for items, for different suppliers, and for each one of the purchase orders. We can see what's planned for tomorrow, for today in plus seven days, and also we can take a look on data from the past. So we have predefined filters for the last 30 days, last 90 days, and we can even click on the set filter to define our own filtering to set the time range you want to take a look on. After we check the filters, we have here the statuses of the documents. So I only see open documents as I'm seeing today and past open documents. But if I select, for example, last 90 days, I also see the closed documents and the calculated delays over the closed documents as well. After that, we have a graphic. This graphic will show the cost received over time. We can see in gray what is planned to be received. The planned documents can also be for the future or if they are from the past, they are carried over for the today date. And we see in red the values already received. So here we can see month by month how much we have actually received. Now, here on the warehouses, we can see the orders for each one of the warehouses. I see here how much orders I have for the warehouses, both open or closed. If you only want to see the closed, we can click on the closed to filter and see only the amount of closed orders for each one of the warehouses, or click on open if you want to see only the open ones, or even select both to get a complete view, and the calculated average delays. Average delays is either when we receive the order, the delay in between delivery date and the date we have effectively received, and if they are still open, the difference in between the delivery date and today. This is what makes up the average delay or the specific delay for each one of the purchase orders. We can also see this by item, seeing all the different products that should be received. In the case we have not yet completely received, we can see this progress bar that goes filling up until we have reached the total quantity. So we can also have an idea on progress for receiving the different items. And in some cases, I can also see the value in bold black. Bold blacks means over received. So in this case, I receive more than what I have planned. So this becomes a bold black. Now I can also see the Zito by supplier, seeing for example, how much orders I have either open or closed for each one of the supplier and what's the average delay for each one of the suppliers. And here a detail for each and every purchase orders, seeing the delay for each one of them, what's the delivery date, the status, if they are open or closed. We can see also a different coloring to highlight which ones are closed and differentiate them from the open ones, number of the purchase order, item, quantity received against total quantity, and the unit of measure. 
and on the top we have two cards that will detail the orders and the rows inside the purchase orders. And we see first the number of open orders and below here the number of closed orders. And here also the open rows and closed rows. Now, all the dashboards are interactive. So each one of the tabs are interactive and we can click on the data to have more details around it. For example, I see that I have eight orders related to this supplier and I want to know what I am purchasing from this supplier and which orders I have open yet. I can just click on it. And here I have a detail for the items included in purchase orders related to the supplier, the amounts, and here which ones are open and the ones that are already closed. So I can basically click on any part of the dashboards. Let's say I want to know from which supplier I am purchasing this item and when it will arrive. I can click on it. I can see the suppliers, the orders and the delivery dates related to that all. Apart from that, you can see that some of the columns have this asterisk. This means that I can double click and access this document. So I can just double click here and I can select either in going to the item code or to the purchase order. So if I click on go to purchase order, it will open up here the purchase order for me related to the line that I did a double click. Now, after the purchase order received, we have the putaways. In the case of the putaways, we only see the open putaways. We don't see the closed putaways. This is the same also for the pick list and for the move orders. For the putaways, we have here for search warehouse and search locations where we have to pick the materials from and target warehouse and target locations to where we have to transfer those materials. The target location can come either from the move order itself or from the defined target location in the item master data. The putaway strategies are not considered here in this dashboard and therefore you can have a different target location the moment you effectivate the move order because of your putaway strategies. In the putaways, we also have a delay calculation. In this case, it's the average waiting time and we can see waiting time by search warehouse, search location, by item and the waiting time for each one of the putaways. For the putaways, we can see both putaways for production and putaways for goods recipio. Here on the top, we see how many putaways we have for production, how many for goods recipio. On the top, we see the number of pending putaways, and below, we see the average waiting time calculated for production and for goods received by the way. We can click in each and every data that you want to detail. Let's say I want to know which materials I need to move to this target location. I can click on it and it will tell me that I have to pick materials from this search location. This is the item to move and these are the open putaways to be moved. I can also see, for example, which open putaways I have for this item. Here I have all the detail, move order numbers, and I can see if this is related to a production order or to a good CPO. In the case of the putaways, I can see here the good CPO number and here the production order number. And I can double click to go either to, for example, this is a production, so I can click to go to the production order or to the good CPO. and even to the move order. So I can also double click and select Prodomax move order. And this opens up the move order for me. If you want to see only the putaways that you have related to production or the good CPO separately, you can just click here on the top and this will feature only production, this only good CPO. Now, after that, we have the sales orders to be delivered. In this, we also have data from the past. If you want to know, for example, what is the average delay that we are having to deliver goods to a specific customer, or if there are certain products that I'm having more delays in delivery. In the case of the sales orders, we have, apart from open and close, a third status that is the sales orders currently in picking and packaging process. So if I look like this, I can see that I have the three statuses, open, pick and pack and closed. And the ones in pick and pack are highlighted in yellow and also have this yellow exclamation icon for me to understand that they are currently being picked or packed. And I can also click here to see the detail of the picking list associated to the sales order as I'm going to display in more details later on. Now here, the design of the sales orders to be delivered is very similar to the purchase orders to be received. So they have basically the same information focusing on the sales. So you can see here the amounts of sales over time instead of cost over time. We can see in gray the planet amount of sales to be delivered. 
and we see, for example, if I select data from the past, I see in red, I'm seeing a lot of data here because I just took off the filter, but I can establish filters for different intervals. And I see in red the amounts of sales that I have delivered. I can see the warehouses from which I have to deliver the materials, what's the current delay that I have on orders in pick and pack, open orders, the delay for the closed orders, delay per warehouse, per item, per customer, and here for each one of my open sales orders, or even the delays associated to the closed sales orders. We have here the details for the items inside the sales orders, the customers for which I have to deliver materials, and here the sales orders in details. So I can, in the same way, click on an item to see in which sales orders this item is included, for which customers I have to deliver this product, or even click on a customer to see the products I need to deliver to this customer and which sales orders they are related, if they are already in pick and packaging or not. And as I said before, when they are in pick and pack and I want to know, for example, the details of the picking list or the progress that I have currently associated to the picking list, I just need to click on the sales orders here on this grid, for example, like this. I want to see the detail of both of them. I can hold shift and select both and come into the pick list tab. The only tab that interacts with other tabs is a sales order deliveries that interacts to the pick lists. So in the, all the other cases, the tabs only show data inside itself and all the filters that I apply are only applied inside the tab. In the case of the sales order delivery, when I filter something here, the filter also applies to the pick list tab. And on the pick list, I can see a lot of details related to the pick and packaging process. And here I can see, for example, the priority of the pick list, what is the status of the pick list. For example, I have one that is ready packed, another one is ready to pick. I can see the quantity done against the total quantity. So I have this one packed and I see all the details related to the picking and packaging process in here. Now on the top, I also have the cards either for the open documents and the open rows inside the document. So I can see here open on the top and close on the bottom. As I'm not checking the closed ones, I only see open here and zero on the bottom. If I just take out the future, I can see the amount of closed documents and closed rows in here. The closed ones are also differentiated in color so i don't make a mistake here in the grid so i can clearly see the ones that are open and the ones that are closed i have also the bold color if i have over delivered so in this case for example i delivered one unit more than i had planned so i see in bold and now let's go into the pick list tab and the pick list tab is aimed at giving all the information related to the picking and packaging process so here we can filter by future dates the pick list also do not display data from the past. It only displays open data at this moment. We have planet dashboards related to performance analysis, for example, knowing the performance of the picking operators and so on, but this will be part of another dashboard. In this case, in the workload, as the aim is to display the open workload for the logistics supervisors at this moment in the warehouse, we only display the open pick lists. We can see the pick list for today or delayed from the past, Plan it for tomorrow or for today plus seven days, or even set our own future if you want to see longer intervals. Then we have the pick list status. Basically, we can have up to 10 status in this list. The status comes from not ready to pick, that is the first status, and partially delivered, that is the last status, that is the status 10, that I currently don't have here in my data. And this status represents the complete flow of the process. So we start as before picking, as not ready to pick, then you have the materials ready to pick, you go, you complete the picking, then you go into packing, you complete the packing, you go into deliver and you deliver the goods. When the pick lists are completely delivered, then the pick lists are closed and they go out from this dashboard. So here I only see until status 10, that is until partially delivered. When they are completely delivered, that is status 11, then they go out from the dashboard. The statuses that I see here on the top are also graphically represented here on the pick list grid. The idea is for you to have an understanding of the process completion just by looking at this column. So if I see that I have a very small green bar that is zero one, this means that I am still on the beginning of the process. And if I see it on the nine, that I'm very close to ending the process in this case, I can just click and see that nine represents packed. I can see the pick list by pick list type. So if you have different types of pick lists, let's say you have pick lists that are specifically for e-commerce and other pick lists that you have for other types of activities, you can see the different types and just click on them to segregate the pick lists. 
you can see what you have to pick for specific target locations. In the pick list, we can also see the pick list by routes, then by items. So the items I have to pick, the customers for which I have to pick materials, and here the pick list details. And on the top, I can see the different priorities. I see here in the big number, the number of pending pick lists by priority, and in the bottom, the number of delay days for each one of the priorities. So let's say I only want to see my high priority pick list. I just click here and it filters for me. Now I want to know everything that I want to pick for this material or for this customer. I just need to click and it will show the detail according to what I click here in the dashboard. Or even if I want to know what I need to pick to deliver for a certain route. Now you can see that I also have columns with this asterisk icon. This means that I can just double click and go directly to the problem X pick list. This also helps me to work in moving the priorities directly here from the dashboard. Let's say that I have this pick list that is currently in normal priority, but I want to downgrade the priority to low. I can click here to go into the pick list. From here, I can switch the priority to low, update. And when the data is refreshed, I can configure the dashboards to automatically refresh the data even after, for example, one minute. And after I refresh, now I see that I have four pick lists in the low priority. Or even if, for example, I want to move this one that is on status five to high priority. So I currently have two pick lists on status five. If I change this one to high, and refresh the data. I see that now I have the three orders here under status five. So this also helps the supervisors to, according to what they see on the dashboard, be able to just double click, enter automatically on the pick list and do the changes that they want, including change the priorities. And we have the final tab here that is for the move orders. On the move orders, we see all the other types of move orders apart from the putaways. That can be the replenishment orders, warehouse transfers, and the manual moves. So the layout is very similar to the putaways. The difference is that here we can see the different types of move orders, and we can click, for example, to see what are the replenishment orders that we have, warehouse transfers, and manual moves that we have created. We see also the source and targets, both warehouse and location. We can see the average wait times and the move orders that we have for each one of the items. We have all the same interactivity. We can click on the different items to know what are the move orders and even click on the move orders to see which items are included in that move order. Now, this is what we have as our first dashboard, that is the workload dashboard. And the next one is the containers overview. The containers overview is aimed at giving you a complete view across your inbound and outbound containers. So let's say if you normally import goods, you can see the complete flow and track all the details for the containers you have for importing the materials. And if you use, for example, your own fleet of trucks to deliver goods to the customers, you can also have an understanding on how well you are using the capacities of your trucks and track the details for each one of the trucks and even your outbound containers that you have for your customers here using this dashboard. So we start by seeing the statuses and the shipping statuses related to the containers. The statuses are always four, so you can see the open in transit, deliver and closed, and all of them have a calculated average delays. And in the case of the containers, we also have a total value, so you can see the value associated with the different containers. And the shipping statuses can be customly defined, so you can create your own shipping statuses, and then you can, this can also be used to filter the containers belonging to each and every status. After that, we have the incidents. Every time you have an incident associated to the container, you can see the incidents in here. When there are incidents, we can also see the flag here on the container. So if we see a red flag, this means that the container has an incident. And if I want to know what's the incident in this case, I just click on the container and this will tell me what is the associated incident. Or I can also click on the incident to see which containers have that incident at this moment. Then we can see here, purchase from and sold to. That represents the countries from which we are purchasing containers and the countries for which we are selling containers. And we can see the average delays for each and every country, the amounts of containers for each and every country, and the total values for the different countries. Here on the container details, we can see the container IDs, the delay for each container, the delivery date, 
the container code, container name, shipping type, base document that originated that container, the bill of lading. This is very important, especially when you are importing goods. So you know, for example, when you should do the first payments, then the original port, estimated departure date, estimated arrival on the port, estimated arrival, destination port, actual arrival on port, actual delivery. And here we can see how much from the container capacity we have used in terms of weight and volume. This is especially useful in the case that, as I said before, you have your own fleet of trucks. So you can see how well you are using the capacities for your trucks. And you can also see this information consolidated into a graphic by container that shows you the average occupation that you have, in this case, weight against maximum weight for each one of your containers. So you can see if you are overusing the capacities on the containers or even underusing the capacity. So in this case, for example, this one has an average occupation of 75%, 58%, 33%. And I can even click on a container from here to see what I have purchased or delivered on this container. Now you can see here that we have countries from which we purchase materials or to which we sell materials. And we can see here in the map, the values associated to each country. And if I just hover the mouse over the countries, we can see the total value and how much we had of purchases and how much we had of sales to that country and also the number of containers. If you want, you can also click here to filter, for example, just Great Britain, see all the containers related to Great Britain. And here on the map, the value. On the bottom here, we can see also some details about the total weight, total volume, and total value related to the containers. And this will represent the filters that we select on the top. So by now I have not selected any filter and I can see just the total values. But if I select, let's say, only the open containers, I can see that the open containers have this total weight, this volume, and this total value. On the containers, we can see both data for the future and data from the past. So you see all the containers existing in the database. We can define our own filters to see data from the past, or you can see the containers that are planned to be received, let's say in the next 90 days, or even data from the past for already arrived containers. On the containers, we have even two more tabs. They are aimed at detailing more the data in sales and purchasing aspects. So if I click on sales, I have, first of all, this button that is called only sales. This button exists for me to see, for example, the container overview, only containers related to sales. For example, I can come here and click on only sales. And now if I come back into the container overview, I see only the containers I use to sell materials. The same I can do, for example, if I take off this filter and select only purchases. Then I come back and now I don't see anything related to sale. I only see containers related to purchases. Then we can see the warehouses from which we are selling and the total values for each warehouses, the statuses on the containers, the routes for which we are selling. Now the sales over time and together with this graphic, we see the total volume in cubic meters and the total weight we have sold. And we can see here some more details about the sales. For example, sales by city and country. So we see that we are selling a lot to this country. Now I might want to know to which cities I am selling, especially if I want to, let's say, to optimize my delivery routes or delivery processes on that country. So when I click here, I can see the total value for each one of the cities in the country that I select. So I can see to which cities we are delivering more in weight, in volume, or in value and also the number of containers. And also to which cities we are having more or less delays. If I take off the future, I can see all cities to which I sell materials for the different countries. Then we can also see by business partner or by items. And the items are especially useful. Let's say if I want to know what's inside a container. So here I have a container related to sales order. And if I click on this container, I see here the different sales orders that are included in it, but I don't know the items that are on it. I can just come here sales and I see the items included in that container and also the business partners for each I need to deliver.
And basically the same analysis I can do for purchases. So if I come under purchases, I can see here warehouses into which we are purchasing materials, statuses on the containers, purchases over time. So over time, what was the values purchased and also the weight and volume related to the purchases. And here purchases by city and country, purchases by business partner and purchases by items. So I can, for example, come into a container to see the items included on it, or even click on an item and see which containers include that item. Or even what I have of containers related to a specific supplier. On the containers overview, we can even double click to directly open the container on the container management function. Now, finally, we have also the Kanban board. The Kanban board is aimed at providing you a view over your open picking tasks. So we see, first of all, the pick list proposal. So what is still pending to be transformed into pick list, but can give you an idea, especially for the workload to what will come to be picked. And for the existing pick lists, we have three different statuses. The statuses are based on the 11 statuses that we can see here on the pick list. So we have statuses related to picking, to packaging, and to delivery. And the statuses are grouped into three basic statuses here on the Kanban board. There are to pick, to pack, and to ship. We can see under to pick all the statuses until picking done. And after the picking is completed, it becomes to pack. And when the packing is completed, it becomes to ship. So I can see, for example, here from not ready to pick until ready to pick or picking in progress. Then when picking is completed, it comes from here and it will be here in packing in progress until here the items are completely packed. And I can see here either the packet pick lists and the pick list partially delivered. After they are completely delivered, they will go out from the Kanban board. I can see in the case of the pick list proposals here for what we need to pick. So we see here, for example, that this is for a sales order, the number of the sales order. We could also see, for example, for if this is for a production order, for a warehouse transfer and so on. The number of rows that we have inside the document. So to have an idea on the amount of the effort to perform that picking. The due date, the reference, in this case, it's the customer for which you're picking. And here the quantity that we have in the pick list proposal. If I double click, it can automatically open up the pick list proposal for me. Then in the case of the pick lists, we have here also for which document we are picking. It can be for sales orders. It can be also for warehouse transfers or production orders and so on. Here we see the detailed status related to this pick list. In this case, it is not ready to pick, picking completed, packed in the same way as we see in the workload dashboard. On the pick list itself, we see the number of the wave and the number of the pick list. And also here we see the priority and the pick list type. So I have all my pick lists into a standard type. that are the same types that I can see here in the pick list types. If you have more types, you can see the types in here. And you can even filter for specific types or even for specific priorities. Let's say I only want to see all my high priority pick lists. To achieve that, I just need to click on the future and select, for example, high. This will show me only the cards related to high priority. So in the same way, if you have different statuses, you can just type in the status in here, and this will show you the cards related to that particular status. Then we can see here the due date. The due date will always be in red if we are over. Then we can see where we have to stage the materials at, what is the reference, the quantity, in the case of pick, the quantity picked against the total quantity and the quantity pack against the total quantity and the operator that is currently executing the process. As we go progressing on the different picking processes and packing process, we see that this bar is filling up. As we go picking the materials, we see that the quantity increases and the bar increases. And also after we pack the materials, we can also see that the quantity and the bar increases as well. 